to my channel. My name is Brienne Beebe. I'm a high school math teacher and I love, love, love talking about all things productivity and organization for teachers. So recently I shared the secret four-step formula to organize literally anything. I will have that linked down below. It's a nine minute video that basically goes through my system for organizing anything and organizing it so that it stays organized. But since we were talking about organizing anything, there is this one step that is rather ambiguous. There's one step about coming up with a strategy for organizing and your strategies are going to vary. If you're organizing like a physical item, it's very different than trying to come up with a strategy to organize your emails. So today I wanted to share some of the common strategies that I use throughout my classroom for organization. And these are honestly some of the same things that I use throughout my home for organization as well. And this is not like a be all end all list of ways to organize, but it's just what I happen to use the most. I am sure that I'm going to put this video out and then think of something else and say, oh my gosh, why didn't I include that? And I'll just forget one thing. I know it's going to happen, but it is what it is. That's why I actually have a blog post for this and it's going to be linked below also. And you can check the blog post and see if I've updated or added anything else. And one last side note before we begin, if you're wondering about organizing paper, that is a completely separate video and it's coming next. Okay, don't get mad that this one's really obvious, but the first one that we have to talk about is bins. These bins specifically came from the Dollar Tree. I'm not going to make specific recommendations about one type of bin over another, but I don't know if you were watching YouTube like four or five years ago. There were so many channels that just went so deep into all the different things that you could find at the Dollar Tree and how to use them and all that. I loved those videos. I honestly miss them, but I now have a stockpile of bins. Like these are extra bins that I have hanging out in an upstairs closet that I brought down just for the video. So we love bins because they contain things and they are an open container, right? There's no lid on there. It's very easy for me if I needed to just grab whatever I needed from here. So you want to use bins for something that you need easy access to. Bins come in all shapes and sizes like I have here. Like this long skinny one is pretty ideal for holding pencils and other writing utensils. This one, I have a couple of these in my desk and they hold like technology stuff. And then I have, I'm trying to think what I use this for. This is like my favorite bin. So even when I like purge bins, cause that's coming next, I won't get rid of this one. I'll hold on to it. I definitely remember using it a lot when I was organizing my pantry with the baby food and stuff like that. And I definitely have a couple of these upstairs that organize laundry things. So I definitely use these, but I'm like at a loss for what I have these for in my classroom specifically. But I do have a bin roughly this size, actually a little bit bigger, and it doesn't have like the basket weave texture. And it holds markers. It's like a ton of markers are all in there. And whenever my students are doing some kind of project where they were using markers, I would just take that bin and put it out on the table, let them dig through it, find what they need and wanted to use. And it's just easy. It's easy for them to get what they need and it's easy for them to put the markers back in. So that's why we love a bin. So ultimately bins will contain things for you and because they don't have a lid, there's no limit to how tall something could be that goes in the bin except for maybe where you put this. Like if I put this in a shelving unit, I could only put something in here as high as the shelf. But for the most part, if I had something like tall in the bin, I could have it sticking out of the bin and it would be fine. I have like these nice big sturdy bins that I use for interactive notebooks in my classroom and the notebooks sit in there vertically so the notebooks are all sticking out of the bin but it's perfect. So we love bins because they're open, they allow for easy access and then they contain whatever it is that you're trying to put into the bin. It's not going to be like spilling out all over the place unless you try to put too much in but bins are just great because they're just so easy to work with. Now, the only thing with the bins is you see this one is pretty rounded on the sides here. Try to find bins that are more rectangular because typically when we take bins, we're putting them in something like a drawer, on a shelf, in a cabinet, and those are spaces that are shaped to be rectangular. So you're better off getting rectangular shaped bins. Like this one's actually fine, 
but like sometimes when we say bins people think oh okay i'm gonna use a basket baskets tend to be more rounded like i know they come in all shapes also but if you put like a circular basket in this rectangular space it doesn't fit very well you end up wasting space so try to stick with rectangular bins in your classroom i bet you didn't know there's so much to discuss when it came to bins the next organization strategy that I love, love, love is a caddy. Now this is my caddy from my desk and I can't keep it on my desk anymore because now my son likes to get into the pens and start drawing on my desk. So this gets kept up high, but think of a caddy as being a bin with sections. This makes so much noise. It's gonna be really hard to see, but it is sectioned so I'm able to organize this and say, this is where my pilot pens go. This is where the flare pens go. This is where the ink joy pens go. And it has a handle. So caddies are basically like a bin with sections and a handle. So they're a little bit more portable, which is great. And then they keep things organized within the little sections. Now caddies are ideal in your classroom for student supplies. So I have a set of caddies that I use for interactive notebooks. They hold the glue, the scissors. Sometimes they need rulers, so I put rulers in there. I put in highlighters. And when we're doing different activities, because I have a caddy designated for each table, I'll take whatever components of the activity that students need and put them in the caddies. So this way, students are grabbing the caddies on their way in and putting them back on their way out. And I'm not having to do anything crazy to distribute their supplies. They get everything that they need in that one caddy. And caddies are just really great for that portability factor. So if you have a project that you're working on and you need to take supplies with you from one area to another, a caddy might be the solution that you need. Don't get mad, this is another strategy that's really obvious, but boxes. Boxes are really great because like a bin, they're going to contain things, but they have a lid so they're a little bit more secure. So with the lid being the only difference between a box and a bin, Boxes have the advantage over bins that they can be stackable. Like I could put one box on top of another and store them that way and that's really nice. This specifically is a photo box. I get these from Michaels. They're usually pretty inexpensive when you catch them on a sale. And what's cool about these is they have a little space for you to add a label, which is what I do in my classroom. This is um, a photo box full of like crafting supplies. I think this is a... Uh, yeah, this is like yarn and stuff. So I don't have this one labeled, but the ones in my classroom are labeled. I keep manipulatives in my photo boxes and like bonus extra supplies that I have lying around. Well, they're not lying around because they're in the box. Another type of box that I personally use a lot is pencil boxes. So these again, they're really inexpensive. You can find a ton of them when it's back to school. And if you get a bunch at the same time, then they're like the same kind and they are stackable and interlocking. So I could stack a bunch of these and they're gonna be like a pretty sturdy stack because one box is going into the grooves of the other. So pencil boxes are really great for if you have like a set of something, like this is a set of Crayola, what are these, super tip markers. These I don't take to school, these are for here. Um, but I have boxes like these that have highlighters. And I have a collection of like miscellaneous, miscellaneous pens in a box like this. I have compasses, the little compass pencils have their own pencil box. So pencil boxes are awesome for that and they're also pretty, pretty sturdy. But like I said, boxes come in all shapes and sizes. You can be using completely different boxes for different things, totally fine. We're just talking about the, the what and the why really. So our next strategy is a teacher favorite. Like you will see these all over Teachergram and that would be drawers. So Sterilite makes amazing drawers that are the size of paper. So you can fit paper in the drawers and you'll see teachers have like a drawer that's to copy, to grade. I don't know what else they do. They do like three categories. I have some in my classroom and I use them to keep copies. So the drawers are labeled for my different courses that I teach. I have a set of drawers that are for students to access. So it has scrap paper, lined paper, test corrections forms. 
And then I have another one that's just for me and it has like the printer paper, lined paper, and graph paper. So drawers are loved because they are easy to access. You just open them and then there's everything you need. And they hide the mess. Not judging, it's okay. Drawers could be messy. You could throw a bunch of things in here and as long as you keep them categorized, you don't wanna put things that don't make sense to go together, as long as it makes sense what's in the drawer, then it's easy to find what you're looking for. You just open the drawer and it's right there. So drawers are kind of like the best of both worlds where they are easy to access like bins, but they hide the mess like boxes do. And they're kind of fun. I don't know, there's something satisfying about opening and closing a drawer. So a set of drawers that you'd often see featured by teachers is the rainbow cart. It comes from Michaels. I have one in the corner over here and I just have like different kinds of cardstock in there. I used to actually change up how I organized it, but like there's page protectors, laminating pouches. It fits paper very nicely and it's rainbow, so it's cute. And the other drawers that are very common for teachers to use to organize with are the drawers that they use to make a teacher toolkit. Now I remember years ago when the teacher toolkit was like new and popular and I was like, uh-uh, I don't need that, that's so extra. Like I'm, I'm organized, I don't need that. And then I think it was two years ago I got one. It's life changing, I love my teacher toolkit. So basically what you look for is a set of drawers from like Home Depot or Lowe's, some kind of home improvement store. And it's drawers of different sizes and they're pretty much meant for like hardware but they fit pens very well, they fit post-it notes, markers, they fit all kinds of stuff. I love my teacher toolkit. It basically eliminated some of the extra photo boxes that I had where I took like my extra teacher supplies and like had to Tetris them into the box to make them all fit. And it was nice because I knew where to go for my supplies, the box was labeled, but it was kind of annoying. The drawers, like I can just, have a drawer like it's tiny but it's all paper clips and all my paper clips are in there and they fit nicely it's easy to get what I need and I don't have to worry about trying to get boxes of paper clips to fit inside of another box I've gone way more into detail than I expected and I'm totally okay with it because I love talking about this stuff but I hope you don't mind because I meant to be more like general these are the things that you can use but we are on the last one that I could think of for what I use so frequently to organize with. And the last one is pouches. Now pouches, again, like everything else, they come in all different shapes and sizes. They typically have a zipper. And what's really great about the pouches is that they're soft, so they're kind of malleable. It really depends on what's in here, but these are pouches that I keep in my teacher bag. And so they kind of conform to whatever's going on around them. And the key with a pouch, just like organizing a single drawer, is to give it one purpose. So this pouch just holds like all of my technology stuff. Like there's wires in there. There's like the adapter for my MacBook, for the USB. I got USBs in there, hard drive. So any of like the little techie stuff that I needed to take back and forth with me to school this year has been living inside of this pouch. And then this other pouch has markers in it, just like dry erase markers and um, like a felt eraser that I use. And I've had to bring both of these back and forth because of just the circumstances of this school year. So these have been super helpful. And you can get pouches that are bigger, you can put other stuff in them. They're really great for anything that you want to be portable. Like I said, these come and go with me. The pouches, everything else I mentioned here, they're pretty easy to find. If it's not the same one that I have, it's easy to find something very similar that will work for you in your space. I never know whether or not my camera's picking up other noises around me, but my husband is bringing in the garbage cans. So if there's a weird noise in the background, that is it but it's totally okay because we are done. We got through them all. So the five strategies that I frequently use to organize my classroom and my home are bins, caddies, boxes, drawers, and pouches. I hope you enjoyed this video and that it was helpful to you, but if you have any questions at all, please leave them in the comments below. And as always, thanks for watching.